the steps are just for safety, to make sure the cannon is ready to be loaded. The next command will be to handle and bring forth the cartridge. That's for the powder monkey back here. And yes, they were called the powder monkey because they had to be quick and agile in order to get the powder to the front of the cannon. This is the only time the powder is actually exposed to the enemy. So he would cradle it in his arms or put it in a bag and bring forth the cartridge. Andy, pretend you're bringing forth the cartridge. He brings it up to the man with the worm and they look at it, make sure it's a good cartridge and load it into the cannon. Now it will be rammed down to the bottom because again, it's a muzzle loader. So it has to be rammed all the way down. Ram the charge. Now you see what the guy with the ramrod does. He throws it down. He throws it, he doesn't pack it in like you see in the movies, because what if we did miss something burning down there, and there, there is something burning down there, and that powder lights off, and he has a firm grip on the ramrod, the cannon goes off, the cannonball, the ramrod, and his hands are gonna go down the field. So he'll throw the ramrod down, so just in case the cannon goes off, he gets to keep his arm. The cannon is now loaded, it's time to pick and prime. The man who's not kissing the gunner's daughter, who is covering the touch hole, has a brass pick, Brass does not create any sparks, so he can puncture the powder charge through that touch hole that he was covering. That exposes the gunpowder inside the cannon. He will then introduce a priming quill. It's a bird's feather, a quill, a quill feather, filled with gunpowder, so it acts as a fuse from outside the cannon to inside the cannon. They could also usually use a musket cartridge and dump uh, powder, loose powder in there too, but the priming quills work much, much better. He would then cover it with his hat, to make sure that no stray sparks or anything like that on the on a very smoky, uh, uh, fire-ridden battlefield would set this cannon off prematurely. We gotta make sure that it goes off when we say fire. The next two commands are gonna give given to the last man, who is the first gunner, who holds the Linstock. Frank, you show everyone the Linstock. The Linstock holds the slow match. A slow match was a linen rope treated with a chemical called saltpeter. That, um, that makes the rope burn very slowly, but very hot, like the end of cigar or, or cigarette. I actually burnt myself on a slow, a slow match a few weeks ago, and I had a blister for about a week and a half. So you don't want to, uh, you don't want to deal with that. It's the, like it's, it's like the end of a uh, cigarette. That's what's going to fire the cannon. So on the command of make, make ready, he'll bring the linstock up, make sure that we're ready to fire, and then bring it down to the fuse, and boom, the cannon goes off. Now we're going to go through a dry run to make sure, just for safety, and make sure everything's uh, good. No powder on this run. When we our second round, we're going to go through the, um, the actual live fire. We'll fire three times for you guys. You don't have to cover your ears now. When you hear me give the command, make ready. That's when you cover your ears. But don't put your fingers in your ears. Cover your ears. Open your mouth because there will be a sonic boom coming out of the cannon. Alright,
Make way! Cover your ears! Give fire! Jose! Pass it back! Cover the bench! Work! Thank you.